to the Razor's Edge uh, website and thanks for, for taking the time to uh, join us on this. It's uh, no problem. to speak to you and uh, it is evening over there for you and I think it's uh, probably a bit warmer where you are than I am, yeah? Um, look, it has been, but you've caught us on a weird one. Uh, it's currently about uh, 13 degrees and it is pissing down with rain. <laughs> Unbelievable. I thought I'd be speaking to you in it nice and warm because it's about two degrees here but there we are yeah well about two days ago it was uh nearly 40 degrees yeah oh my god mad mad it, it does not make up its mind down in melbourne yeah sure good well it's good to speak to you and congratulations on the album by the way uh we'll talk about that Thank in a you bit very much um it's been one of the uh the talked about albums over here for a good while so uh it's great to we'll talk about that in a oh, second <laughs> awesome so um if I could start just with a little bit, obviously you're becoming over here, certainly in the UK. The last album was was the one that really got people saying, ah, right, Harlot. Yeah, I've heard of them before, but this album actually moves it on. You've been around for a good few years now with quite a number of <laughs> quite albums. Quite a while, yeah. Back, yeah. How, how yeah, you... this is a, this is album four. So, yeah. So take me back to the beginning. How did how did uh, Harlot actually form? Oh, it was one of those um kind of high school battle of the bands type situations. Um, you know, getting together with a bunch of your mates that all kind of listened to the similar music and um could, yeah. you know, half play an instrument. We kind of formed from there and um, you know, after high school, uh you know, a few of us decided to keep it going and um yeah, you know, did some demos, um, had a go at other genres, you know, played around with all the stuff we like. Because, of course, you know, when you're a teenager, you love a bit of everything. And it's yeah. not until you mature a little bit and you realise what it is you want to do. And, um, <laughs> yeah, so we were all like, uh, you know, in our early 20s and we started, when we started releasing thrash metal albums. And, um, you know, I'm 30 now and four albums deep. And it's it's been, it's been good it's just yeah every time an album comes out it seems to you know do what it needs to do for us uh you know picks up a few more fans and um you know builds on our sound and um it's, it's just great to constantly get um well i say constantly we we keep getting positive feedback every time we do something so i don't think we've i don't think we've released the bad one yet you know <laughs> great great it's yeah that's, that's really good so obviously i suppose in the last 10, 15 years, you've been getting more and more bands starting to, to come to Australia because there was a time when you, I assume, probably before before you were actually going to gigs, that they were far and few between. Can you remember who the first band you actually saw from abroad was in, in Australia? I, I do. And it was um, uh, it would have been the January of 2006. Um and it was, I, I remember it being about a 40 degree day um, and it was a shock for the band because it was, you know, behemoth and they oh, were not right. ready for that kind of heat. Um, I was I was 16 years old. It was an underage show and they were playing at a tiny little pub. They just released Demigod. So they were kind of, I think that was yeah. the album that kind of broke them. Like that was yeah. the album. That was, that was where they started launching from. But they were, you know, touring, they were doing the long and hard yards with this, um, with this tour and they did an underage show on a, Sunday afternoon, they were supported by Cyclotic, who I'm sure you've, uh, I'm sure you're aware of, as like yeah, one yeah. of our major tech death exports in Australia. And um, yeah. uh, the Führer and the Amenta, who are um, also like you know reasonably large in the Australian scenes. But uh, yeah, that was, and that yeah, that was what it was like, um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, um, touring Australia for overseas bands was was playing the smaller clubs, and it wasn't until I think in the last five five or so years where the, the scene's kind of got enough of a kind of enough momentum that it's been worthwhile for, for bands to come down here. And um yeah. you know, I've kind of haven't been playing in the scenes. I, I remember when it was, you know, the <laughs> the local scene was great because there was no internationals and then I've seen the internationals flock over here and kind of <laughs> uh, yeah. starve our local scene and it's um yeah, and <laughs> coronavirus has put the power back in the local hands. <laughs> yeah, thankfully sure. we're, we're not going to be having uh, we're not going to be having touring bands for a very long time, and um, we're yeah. definitely not going to be able to get to overseas for quite a while. I don't think. Yeah, sure. So, so talking about the scene in Australia, obviously, um, 
I'm old enough to remember when the 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 scene in Australia was Rose Tattoo and ACDC and a few others. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you've got a really wide spectrum now. So you've got bands like Voyager who are doing the kind of prog stuff. You've got Rebel Wizards doing the the kind of mad black black metal stuff and Meshiac and people like that. How's the scene at oh, the wow. moment for you guys? <laughs> um, the scene is, um, uh, you know, being being heavily. Uh, you know, heavily invested in the thrash metal movement. Um, I've, I've kind of, I've been following that for most of my career. And uh, the, I think the weird thing about the Australian scene is that we are five, 10 years behind what the rest of the world's doing. Um, yeah. Cause apparently like what I've been told is um, there was a thrash revival um, uh, overseas, like, you know, Europe and the UK, but, you know, bands like Evile, I think were doing stuff in the mid two yeah. thousands. And that's yeah, kind yeah, of when yeah. there was a bit of a thrash revival movement um, in the rest of the world. But that didn't hit Australia till like 2012, 13. Um, okay. So like that's when it picked up over here because in the mid 2000s, Australia was a grindcore country. Like we were doing, you know, bands like Fuck I'm Dead. And of course we had Blood Duster and, and all those bands. Yeah. So we were we were very, very heavily, um, you know, entrenched in tech death and, and grind and those kind of things. So our thrash revival was much later on. And it wasn't until uh, we went on tour in 2015 through Europe and we had people asking us why we were playing thrash metal when it was, you know, the <laughs> the revival was over. They were like, <laughs> the revival's done, it's happened, the thrash metal's dead again, why are you guys playing it? And I was like, I didn't realise that that was the case. <laughs> we were doing quite well with it back home. So, um, yeah. It was a shock and, you know, we were just playing the music that we liked. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't about trying to catch any waves. It was just, yeah, um, yeah. you know, do, doing what we wanted to do. So, uh, uh-huh. look, the scene down here is, it's a little bit behind the times and it is, you know, having played in a bunch of countries now, it's, I would say that the Australian scene is uh, very closely resembling to, you know, what you'll get near the other country. It's, you know, it's dedicated. It's, you know, not as big as the other, you know, genres of music, yeah, but it's sure. like really passionate people that, you know, really love mm. it. And they see, you know, the music as a way of life. It's just, um, you know, the problem with Australia is always going to be the, the size of it compared to the population. There's a you know yeah. 10 hour drive between every major city. And yeah, um, yeah there's yeah, not enough people to go around for us to make a living playing music. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to I'll have to remember that the next time someone bitches about driving two and a half hours to London. To oh, see mate, it. It's <laughs> fucking insane. It's it's well, you know, doing like four shows in Spain and the bus driver's like, all right, we've got a long drive tomorrow. It's you know, it's, it's six hours to the next city. We're just like, ah, <laughs> child's play. <laughs> we can shit that in, yeah. no problem. Yeah. And we, we, sure. we, yeah, we're driving through, like, desolate wastelands down there. Like, it's like, there is literally nothing between major cities. Yeah, just fingers crossed you don't break down, I suppose, is it? Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> we'll run into a bushfire. <laughs> so the interesting thing over here now in the UK is that there is another, um, in the last 18 months or so, there's been a real another thrash revival if you like so there's loads oh, fantastic. of fantastic new stuff coming <laughs> coming coming through so um you're right on you're right on point with uh, a lot of what the stuff that we're listening to at the moment so i think good music never goes out of fashion at all it just keeps coming mm. around so <laughs> it's yeah it's cyclical and it's absolutely yeah, is. and absolutely. if it's if it's coming into vogue in the uk now i reckon by 2030 australia will have a big thrash scene again <laughs> Sure. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a very rich forty year old man. <laughs> <laughs> I remember thinking I was gonna be that. It didn't work out, but there we go. <laughs> Best laid plans of mice and men. Indeed, indeed. So going back a little bit, if I'm right in my research, I've just finished the Brian Slagle book about the formation of Metal Blade. And I think is it when you you signed with them when you did Extinction, is that right? Um when we when we released our second album, um, we okay. released it independently and then we didn't have, uh, you know, we were releasing it independently, um, you know, physically in Australia and we didn't have anything, uh, worldwide. And, um, we'd, uh, kind of booked on to do a tour with Annihilator by then. Uh, so we were going to be doing six weeks in Europe and a metal blade. We're like, look, you're going to be coming here and we like the album. How would you like to, you know, sign on with a with the deal with us, and um, you know, being the 
acute businessman that I was, didn't even fucking read the contract. I saw Metal Blade and I saw my name on it and I put my fucking signature right on that bad boy. <laughs> Just because living out a childhood dream, like, you know, the, the, yeah, I'm in the band, sure. the, 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 you know, the record level they had King Diamond. I was like, I'm in. I yeah. Don't, I don't give a shit what the fucking contract says. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> if you can organize me a tea party with the king, I'm in. All right. That's all that matters. <laughs> Is that is that still on the wish list, or have you had the tea party? Uh, the, um, the, the tea party will happen one day. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, but no, yeah, it'll be hard. I need to wait until the, I'm allowed to travel again. I Magic. don't think you'll come here for tea. Not for a while. Yeah. Now, you've, you've obviously no. done quite a, a cycle of the, the promotion for detritus of the final age, So, but I want to talk about that a little bit, if that's okay, because Not obviously it's, it's the fresh stuff. <laughs> that's that that was the first album i think with the new guys on it with glenn and lee is that right yeah that that is correct that's uh it's a yeah 50 percent of a new band for this one yeah so so having two new members in a thrash band obviously um can sometimes kind of change the sound but i listened to extinction and then detritus back to back yesterday and whilst Every album of yours, like most bands, obviously you hear the improvement and the and the, the progression. It sounds very um, comfortable that the, the uh, move from the the old lineup to the new lineup. Did they bring what what kind of impetus did they bring to you? Um, like, like we, we were lucky with Glenn because Glenn is um like incredibly like incredibly technically proficient and um like you know, playing thrash metal for him is like back pocket stuff. Like he's a you know traditionally he's a bit more of a death metal drummer so uh, you know the, the beautiful thing about thrash metal is it's um you know any kind of metal musician will probably agree when you say that thrash metal like it might be fast but it's not the most technically demanding music so as someone who was you know comfortable with insane amounts of you know double bass drums and, and blast beats yeah, yeah. like you know pulling pulling it back to thrash was super comfortable for him and he was he was able to absolutely just fucking like nail the recording sessions for the album and um our the lee bartley was he's been in in malice's wake um for you know the last couple of albums of theirs um they're another like fantastic melbourne thrash metal band with um you know heavy influences from like you know classic death metal um yeah. so he's he's you know well well trained and, and well sorted when it comes to you know recording and writing uh solos so you know uh, he he just did phenomenal work on the album um uh, so look they neither of them had any issues um <laughs> sitting into the band and, and just kind of sure. you know filling the job that they needed to do but also like bringing a little bit extra to make sure that we could kind of you know the the difference between album three and album four is that album four has got a lot more kind of sillier stuff that we you know i wasn't able to do with you know past members or, or past you know song ideas there's a lot more yeah, yeah. you know there's, there's blasting and grinding and, and a, a bit of other weird stuff that you know i wouldn't have tried earlier Sure, sure. So I know that um, one of the Facebook, face, Facebook pages that I'm a member of, which is it's called the Thrash Metal Album of the Fortnite Club over here. Um, they, re- it's it's a brilliant club. I'll have to send you a link if you're on Facebook and get you involved in it if you fancy it. But um, it's it they they a lot of the members there in their in their um, end of year albums. Harlot was one of the the thrash bands that was was featuring quite highly in a lot of people's lists um how was the overall reaction worldwide for you was it as good as you you were hoping for i i try and i try and stay realistic in as much as i don't have too much expectation out of it um because i kind of you know when you're so when you're so heavily involved in the actual creating process of the music it's it's yeah. hard to kind of remove yourself from it and and listen to it objectively so you know, I can only finish the album and listen to it and go, look, uh, I did the things that I was hoping to do or I did them, you know, to the best of our abilities. But at the end of the day, you don't know if people are going to like it or not until it's out there. And by the time it's out there, it's out of your hands anyway. So it is yeah. it's it's really, really reassuring and, and like <clears throat> fantastic and, and humbling. And it just makes everything worthwhile when <laughs> people do res- respond to it so positively. And sure. um, we definitely had a lot of. A lot of really nice things said about this album. A lot of, 
you know, there's you know a lot of people saying that it's it's a it's, you know step in the right direction for us, and if this is where the band's heading, then you know they can't wait for the next one, and this is you know our best work to date. And some, you know, seeing it on the top of people's lists for album of the year is um it's it's kind of crazy because you know the people that put those lists together and the people that you know approach musically as uh, approach music as passionately as they do. Like I know yeah, for yeah. a fact that they listen they listen to hundreds of albums that year yeah they listen you yeah. know, as soon as stuff comes out they listen to it they listen to everything that they can find that will come out in a year and to get to you know the end of the year and, and for them to be like that was a standout record um yeah it's a, it's a great feeling and it's it's you know it's crazy as just a you know a bunch of blokes from a you know a city on the arse end of australia to have such an impact <laughs> on you know the the global scene it's it's um uh, I think, it's yeah, just kind of you, crazy it's yeah it's yeah all this stuff that you never kind of dream will happen it's always yeah it's it's your childhood dream stuff but you go oh look it's a bit of a it's a bit of a long shot to kind of expect it yeah, but it's, um, yeah it just makes sure. everything worthwhile brilliant well and, i think yeah, it's well of course, you know, it's, the, so it's the negative comments that are also fantastic <laughs> <laughs> you got to because you got to take the good with the bad and, and the people that tear shreds off us for being um you know unoriginal in a in a genre that's existed for 40 years um, yeah <laughs> i don't know what they expect I don't, <laughs> I don't know how they expect us to write thrash metal that doesn't sound like thrash metal within the confines of thrash metal yeah well i mean exactly exactly mm. and the, the the i suppose that's one of the uh i wouldn't say negatives because if people give you constructive criticism then that's fine it's when they just slag you off but that's the challenge i suppose with social media um for any band these days especially in the last year or so because it's the only way you can get your message out yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah we've had to rely heavily on on those kind of um markets yeah, uh, yeah. I've, I've had sure. to i've had to come to terms with the fact that i'm going to need to learn how to use instagram and, and facebook <laughs> and all those horrendous things that i just yeah. have no interest in that's my, my my interest starts with music and it stops with music when I, <laughs> anything past yeah. that i've never really wanted to touch but unfortunately it's such a big part of the way the world works at the moment so you know yeah it is what it I is and you do just get exposed to people that shit can you for the sake of you know because they can they yeah, they absolutely. yeah. <laughs> i think it's about having a balanced approach so that you actually laugh at some of the crap that comes out but actually do actually enjoy some of the more positive stuff and think yeah that that makes it all worthwhile you know yeah I, look i've seen people say that they go i could write a song like this in five minutes and you just want to go, fuck, man, I will give a hundred bucks if you could just write me a bunch of tracks. Like if, if it's only going to take you five minutes, I'll give you two hours pay. Write me the next yeah. album. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a lot easier, wouldn't it? It yeah. would fucking save me heaps of time. <laughs> so so the, the, the previous three albums, I know that they kind of formed this, uh, the trilogy, as as has been said before. But I don't yeah. want to get to a kind of um, progressive rock kind of, of feel. But obviously on the, on the new album... <laughs> <laughs> concepts mate yeah what concepts. a dirty word <laughs> <laughs> on, it's good enough latest... for king diamond it's good enough for anyone yeah absolutely on the latest one you went more on the aftermath of death and you were looking at subject matter like that is mm. it in in a world that is as and i was talking to i've talked to quite a few people over the past year or so and i've, I've asked the same kind of question in a world that is so fucked up as this one at the moment is it difficult to find enough subject matter or is it more a question of trying to control your rage into, into a channel where you can actually articulate it? Um, I think, I think everything's always been fucked. Like, um, yeah. you know, a lot of people, a lot of people ask me, they're like, Oh, do you think that we're witnessing the end of times? And I'm like, nah, it's going to drag on for fucking ages. Like it's going <laughs> to, it's, yeah, this, it, the world doesn't end with a bang; it ends with a sigh, and it's it's gonna it's just gonna keep getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Yeah, and it's gonna take fucking forever. It's gonna be interminable. Um, but like, it I think it's difficult to write shocking subject matter because <coughs> you know anything that I'm saying has been said a thousand times mm. by you know people much more eloquent than me um, in bands that are you know much <laughs> much bigger than, than we are. So I just kind of. I try not to bog myself down with that too much. And I just, I write about the things that, you know, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say piss me off, but disappoint me about the world and, um, you know, fit them, uh, fit them with the music by, you know, you know, wording them with aggressive 
tones and lots yeah. of percussive sounds. Um, but, but you know, it's the same shit I've been saying for the last three albums. So I just did it again for a fourth. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's all still shit. So yeah, I will never so, not have subject material. No, no, absolutely. And you you obviously threw in the uh, the Cannibal Corpse cover, which. Uh, when I was re- reviewing it for the first time, I was kind of just giving it the first listen, and all of a sudden that came out. And I went, "Whoa, where did that come from? What, where, what, <laughs> what kind of uh, was that? A unanimous choice? Was it your choice? Who, who decided on that? That, that was like a, it was like a, one of those like you know knee jerk decisions that we made in the hotel room um, when we were doing a, a, a show in you know, another city in Australia, and we just went, yeah. Oh, how good would it be? <laughs> what those, like, oh, how cool would it be if we could do this? Um, you know, I'm I'm of the age that um, when when Cannibal Corpse's Kill came out, um, you know, I was I was going to record stores on the weekend and buying CDs of bands that I'd never heard of before, and um, yeah. I I picked up Kill and I put the CD in and I press play and it opens with that song and that was that was my first introduction to Cannibal Corpse and that song will that song is going to be important to me for the rest of my life. And, um, yeah. you know, when you break, when you break down the essence of that song, it is, it is a thrash beat the entire way through with, you know, fast pick riffs and like, a, you know, guttural vocals. And all we had to do was, you know, tune it up a couple of steps into E flat. And then, you know, I just shout over it and it becomes a thrash song. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all we had to do. And that was like, you know, there's, there's that brotherhood between death, metal and thrash metal that is you know they, yeah. they were born of the same breed um it's just you know it's how you approach the tone um yeah, sure. it is fantastic seeing reviews when they when they say that last track on the album doesn't really fit the rest of the album i don't know what they were thinking <laughs> when they wrote that and you go fucking hell <laughs> yeah it's, it's it, the... it worries me when people know less about metal than me <laughs> <laughs> you're embarrassing yourself <laughs> It's it's the it's the curse of the reviewer when you're doing so many and you 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 kind of miss something as obvious as that and then you suddenly read another review of it and go holy fuck I really look like yeah. a dork now but uh, <laughs> I suppose you, you know you'd be used to hearing incredible stuff but you'd also be used to hearing in bands that just don't really understand pacing or songwriting so hearing a crap song wouldn't you wouldn't be looking for the reason why it was crap you would just go oh it's crap. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Like, that made no sense on the record. Yeah. I was um, just moving on a little bit. I was reading, uh, having a look at your Facebook page, and I was very jealous to see you'd actually played a, a live show in, in December at the uh, the Bendigo Hotel. Oh, was... yeah, we're back on it. Yeah, I saw you because got another we, one next Because week. we had, like, yeah, we had fucking, like, aggressively uh, harsh lockdowns. Like, we had, like, you know, don't leave your house unless you go and show. I think what the UK is attempting to do now, um, you know, fucking, you know, putting, what is it, putting the cart before the horse um, yeah. kind of shit. Um, you know, we did that a long time ago. We we got COVID under control. Yeah. Uh, you know, we did it tough for a while. And, and, you know, the rest of the world were like, what are you guys doing? Um, but you know, now, you know, now we're going to pubs, we're playing gigs where, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm organizing, you know, tours around, around the country because we're allowed Amazing. to go and do stuff like that. Like, you know, last month I was traveling interstate by plane to go and do, you know, jobs for my work. And it was, you know, yeah. we, we wouldn't have dreamed of doing that, you know, five, six months ago. But now that, now that we have virtually no cases, we've, we've got that, you know, freedom again and yeah, playing shows just felt incredible. Um, this, yeah. it looked brilliant <laughs> it was so much fun and we get to do it again we're, we're just like the venues are hungry because they've been closed for like you yeah. know, six to nine yeah. months so they just want and you know the fans are like we you know we, we sold out our first show back we sold out in an hour we put tickets up and an hour later we were you know wow. it was done and um, you know that's you know it is our hometown but even then it's that's crazy good for us that's, that's so it's, yeah it's been fantastic uh, yeah. so you guys not doing live live music at the moment god we're not even allowed to go to the pub let alone uh, oh my god no it's it's i um, feel for you I really... well i mean we've got a, a an absolute disaster of a government you know we're an island like you <laughs> we should have been able to shut everything down and contain it but no yeah, it's only fucking only... bojo yeah yeah well i'm in wales i'm not in england so i'm taking a different oh, approach yeah. to that 
<laughs> he's you, not my you can, president. Uh, you can you can remove yeah not my president kind of thing yeah i mean you can, it's yeah, not you can remove yourself right. from that yeah <laughs> so um if i'm right the last time you played over here you came over with havoc a couple of years ago is that right yes we did yeah, yeah in 2018 round i think march or april yeah how was that um a lot of fun a uh, really really yeah. amazing tour to be a part of um uh, and like it felt it felt different for us because we were at a level like we were playing with you know havoc and darkest hour and cephalic carnage and you know obviously we yeah. you know those are bands that we'd listen to like you know i remember hearing covering fire for the first time and and getting mm-hmm. insanely excited about thrash metal and like you know these are these are bands that we'd all grown up listening to or you know we'd we, you know we were at least aware of um and then to be a part of the tour and like treated like we you know we deserved to be there rather than we just kind of bought our way on like we were you know we, we yeah. were like part of a tour package and it just kind of it, it was an incredible tour to be a part of and it was heaps of fun the guys were amazingly like just just like humble and, and fantastic to be around and um you know yeah. all the shows were great fun and it's it's awesome to you know be on the other side of the world and, and see people wearing your t-shirts or asking for photos and you know yeah. yeah, it's just you just yeah, live yeah. out all these childhood dreams and you know, it's all the shit that you never expect to happen and you, yeah. yeah. You remind you you remember, you realize that you're an incredibly lucky dude to be doing the shit that you get to do. Yeah, I think you may be a bit lucky, but obviously you've you've got the you've put the work in and you've got the talent to get there, you know. Not everyone can do that. So I think yeah, <laughs> I refuse I think we... to acknowledge that part of it. <laughs> I chalk I chalk it all up to luck because I'm terrified of coming across as arrogant. No, I don't think so. So um, just as a final couple of things. You, so you've obviously got you could still play some gigs and stuff. So that's probably what you've got on on the books for 2021. Anything else that's coming up? Um, well, because, you know, we had some festivals lined up for 2020 and they kind of got postponed for a year. And now we're, now we're realizing that that's not going to happen either. So um, we're, we're going to be stuck in Australia for the next uh, you know 12 odd months um you know pending a vaccine and pending people actually accepting it um yeah so we've got a, a good amount of time to start you know uh writing another album so yeah we've got we've got some you know creative outlets for ourselves we've got the free time to do it we've got uh, mm-hmm. you know we, sure. <laughs> we got we got the time to do it so the plan is to you know nut out the yeah. writing this this year and then probably get back into the studio next year Grand, great. That'll be good because although uh, the the new album is has only just landed, obviously for you it's probably quite old stuff now, isn't it? You'd be moving on very quickly, I would think. Oh, I'm still excited by the record, yeah. which is a good feeling for me. It's it, I know I've done well when I don't hate listening to it. I think that's a good yardstick for me. So I think that would be entertaining for me for a while. But there's you know it's it's always you you finish an album you listen to it and you go all right next one's I'm going to do that part better I'm going to do this part better yeah. and I've got some I've got some cool stuff I want to try for the next record so are I'm you, looking forward to getting that. Are you going. are you one of those are you able to listen to it straight away? Are you quite happy listening to it back? Um, it takes a bit of time. Yeah, this, um, I'm I'm one of those guys that when we when we go all right, you know, this tour we're gonna play these songs, and um, you know, someone will mention a track, and I go, I literally haven't listened to that in five years. So I have <laughs> to go back and listen to something that I released in you know 2015, so I can remind myself yeah. how the song goes, and and um, yeah, and sometimes I do listen back to the song and go, oh, I did a pretty good job with this one actually. <laughs> I, go, I forgot about this one. This is actually quite cool, but um, yeah, yeah. It definitely takes me a while to be comfortable. It's mainly the voice. I don't know any singers yeah. that can listen to their voice and, and not just fucking hate it. And yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. definitely one of those people. <laughs> Brilliant. It's been a, a, a pleasure to catch you, catch up with you, Andrew, and I appreciate it's obviously the end of a long day for you. So, um, yeah, so end of a long week too. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nearly the weekend. So, uh, it's, it's been a pleasure to speak to you and um, All right, mate. For, for, for anyone that hasn't got a copy of uh detroit to the final age get out there and buy one now yeah yeah do me a favor yeah <laughs> put my kids Brilliant. through college if i ever have them <laughs> excellent right, okay thanks, mate, mate. Good well, chat. take care stay safe and hopefully we'll right. see you in the not too distant future yeah <laughs> fingers crossed mate all right all the best all right, cheers cheers see ya.